All right, let's talk about the next paper, 2018 LLSA. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Yes. Red Eye Jedi. This next paper is called The Heart Pathway Randomized Trial Identifying Emergency Department Patients with Acute Chest Pain for Early Discharge. This is a big one. We're going to learn something here. Take it away, Paul John. Talk about a hot topic. Heart score, heart pathway. Everyone's talking about heart, chest pain, a dime a dozen. How do you get these people safely home so that you don't clog up your emergency department and the hospital? And this is a great paper because it's a prospective randomized control trial at a single academic institution uh, enrolling adults at least the age of 21 com uh, coming in with symptoms suggestive of acute coronary syndrome, chest pain, and they're attending physicians who are uh, actually ordering ECGs and troponins on these. These are the inclusion criteria, and they got randomized into either the heart pathway or usual care. There's about almost 300 patients who enrolled in this study. And the primary outcome they were looking at was the rate of objective cardiac testing within 30 days of their initial ED presentation. You're talking about, did they get a stress test or did they get CT coronary angiography or did they get actual invasive uh, coronary angiography? Then they looked at a lot of other secondary outcomes, things like the early discharge rate, how long were they in the emergency department, how much did they bounce back. And to talk about the two pathways, it's important because the usual care was ACCHA guidelines. That meant that they were recommended to get serial cardiac biomarkers and some form of objective cardiac testing before they got discharged versus the heart pathway which is different from the heart score. It includes the heart score, but they made it binary. Is it low risk, heart score is zero to three, or high risk, uh, score of four or greater? And they got serial troponins at the time of presentation and then at three hours. And if they're a low risk and negative serial troponins, they're eligible for, and they were discharged actually, with, uh, without any further cardiac testing. Fantastic. Uh, they were just encouraged to follow up with the primary care doctor. No need for further uh, cardiac stress testing, which is very different um, than other accelerated diagnostic protocols, which we'll talk about in a little a bit. Big difference there is that with the AHA, it says all the information is the same in both of them. You have the same, you risk stratify, you mm -hmm. get the stuff, but one is very structured. Here's exactly how you stratify patients. Here's exactly when you yeah. get this. Here's exactly what you do with this information rather than you get some stuff, you smear it on the bagel and the, you have brunch. And you kind of make a decision. What happens? Yeah. 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 And as a quick reminder, heart score, we're not going to go over it. You can Google it or it can use MD Calc to actually calculate the score. But this is really, really important and really cool because in the appendix of this article, they actually show the form that they used to calculate the scores. And it's really important because they actually delineate the specific um, features that make a history suspicious or EKG significant. Nice. And then they actually even talk about um, the troponin and the levels that they actually use for the cutoffs for the points. And so it's really, they use conventional troponins, not the high uh, sensitivity ones. And so from there, they actually calculate the score and it provides a lot more clarity as far as what to do um, as far as the disposition of the patient. Nice. So take a look at that because it, you have to apply the study the right way in order to actually get the outcomes. And this is the primary outcome finding of the 30-day objective cardiac testing rate. In the heart pathway, there's significant reduction in stress testing, invasive coronary angiography, CT, CA, uh, compared to usual care. You're talking about 12% reduction, which is significant in all comers, not just the low risk, low and high risk. Um, and then with the secondary outcomes, you can see there's statistically significant uh, uh, higher early discharge rate in the heart pathway. You're talking about from 18% in usual care to 40% um, in uh, the heart pathway as far as also the median length of stay. Whoa, from 22 hours to 10 Crazy. hours. Crazy. I mean, that's big. Giant. And then, uh, of course, the caveat being there was no patient identified in the early discharge uh, that had any missed MACE or major adverse cardiac events in either group during the 30-day follow-up. It's interesting about the MACE is that the primary outcome was testing, but yeah. really, but what everybody talks about this paper is the MACE. Yeah. That thing that if you use this pathway, you get your MACE extremely low, less than 1%, but what they're really looking at is who gets tested. Yeah, and nice. that's an important part because there's an editorial that comes with um, this LLSA article, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that also points out some caveats. Uh, just like what you're talking about, this study was not powered to detect differences in MACE. Um, it was powered to look at objective cardiac testing performed within 30 days. And what's interesting is, is that 12% of the low-risk heart pathway who went uh, ended up going home, early discharge. Remember, these were the patients who were encouraged to follow up with the primary care doctor, but you did not get specific recommendations for cardiac testing as an outpatient. They still got 
the cardiac testing. And the editorial talks about how, well, you know, primary care doctors may have just went ahead and finished that workup on their own anyway, um, but, you know, 12% still ended up getting some objective cardiac testing. But um, the other thing, and very important thing about, as far as caveat goes for this study, was that there was uh, uh, a double check of sorts on the scoring of the heart. The inter-observer agreement was acceptable, but there were disagreements that occurred, and study investigators actually notified um, the attending physicians when their heart score was inaccurate. And there were cases when low-risk heart scores were actually bumped up to high risk because the first score that the attending did was incorrect. Um, so that's an important caveat. That being said, they calculated some, t some statistics from this heart pathway trial, and they said that the negative predictive value uh, for MACE at 30 days was 100%. Again, that caveat being that this study was not uh, powered to detect the significant differences. That being said, though, um, the editorial will talk about uh, how there are other accelerated diagnostic protocols, like the ADAPT uh, tool. It's a decision aid that helps and uses the TIMI risk scoring with serous troponins zero and two hours, uh, and also increases early discharge rates, and it has a high negative predictive value. But the difference is that, again, the heart pathway is looking at disposition um, and does not require, for early discharge patients, um, objective further objective cardiac testing, unlike the ADAPT tool, which mandated within 72 hours that outpatients who got discharged early still got it as an outpatient, the cardiac testing. So the study investigators actually used this pathway uh, when they evaluated the chest pains. And they started off with the heart score and they stratified to low risk and high risk. Everyone got troponins. And in the low risk group, if the troponins were negative and they were low risk, they got discharged uh, without any uh, further cardiac testing. If they're high risk, troponins were negative, they end up getting stress testing and admission. If they're positive in either case, they end up getting admitted with cards consult. So in summary, the heart pathway is different from the heart score. It includes the heart score, but also adds serial troponins at zero and three hours. If you have a low risk, a heart score of zero to three with negative serial troponins, those patients can be discharged home without any further testing safely. I feel like this is kind of a groundbreaker. I like this paper. I actually read this one. I actually read it. I actually read this one. What I'm saying is I read this one. <laughs> Dog the Bounty Hunter read this paper, and I actually like it. And this is a, that was a great... Paul, have I told you that you're smart lately? What this do you is, think about this This one? is probably... This is one of the most impactful yes. papers over the past yeah. several years because many EDs have adopted this exact heart pathway. And I mean, kudos, kudos to the authors, but really, I mean, based on a small patient population, there was not a validation study when this came out when everybody started adopting it, but it was so elegant... Yeah. And so, so nice, necessary and so nicely done. Yeah. And you have a kind of this combination of using the heart score, which had a single troponin to and the adapt score, which used a the, zero and two, yeah. which used a zero and two hours. So now you have this heart pathway that uses two troponins plus the heart score. And if it's all negative per their data, per their data, getting the risk of MACE of major adverse cardiac event at a month under one percent. That 1% is what we've talked about for years as yeah. what, you know, the acceptable miss rate. Right. But as we'll talk about later, it also takes into account shared decision making. Can yeah. I say also that your hair looks radiant? Thank you. How do you like my top knot? I do like that a it's lot. It's kind of floppy. It's really good. Stop moving it. 